Hello, and welcome to Scientific Figure Preparation in Adobe Illustrator in Fiji. My name is Sarah Smith, and I'm from the Stowers Institute for Medical Research, and this is Part 4, Text. So today we'll talk about journal requirements, fonts and sizes, character styles, and libraries. So what do journals expect in terms of text in your figure? Here I've made a table of four representative journals and what their expectations are. So in this orange rectangle are the expectations related to, f to text. So there is each, each journal has preferred fonts. Some specify what font sizes you can use within your figures, and all of them have some recommendations about panel letters, which are that A, B, C, D, that denote which panel is which. So all four of them will accept Arial as a font. They like you to use a very plain font um, and use it throughout your figure. So all of them like Arial which is accessible pretty easily if you're using a Windows machine and um, have your il Illustrator installed on that. If you're using a Mac, you can use Helvetica in most journals. You'll also notice that five points is the minimum text size with it for text within your figure for most of these journals. And even if it's not specified, five points is a good minimum text size that you can use. All of them also specify whether to use upper or lower case for your panel letters, and some also specify whether to use bold and what size font to use for your panel letters as well. So remember in our sample figure we were trying to submit to Nature, and so we're going to use Arial. We're going to use five to seven points for our within panel font sizes, and we're going to use eight point bold lowercase for our panel letters. So let's get started with doing that. So remember last time we set up this figure that has three Im images in panel A. Um, they're all nicely aligned. We have our two channel images and our merged image. Um, but we still need to add the panel letter and we need to add some text, some labels, and, some, and a label for our scale bar to indicate how big it is. So we need to set up the font and the size first. So let's go over to character, and remember you can find this under window type. So I'm going to go ahead and set up Arial. I, I clicked up here, I typed Arial, and I get all these options. I'm just going to choose plain Arial. Then I want it to be bold. And then for nature, we're going to do eight point for the panel letter. Okay, great. So now I'll come over to my text tool. I have this all set up. I'll go ahead and click over here and I'll type A, little letter A. And I can use my black selection arrow to move it where I want it. You can use your align tools, your um, guides to help you with getting your, your panel letters all aligned on the side of the page. Okay, so I've set up my um, panel letter but I'm going to need a lot more panel letters in this figure. Um, typically you have, you know, several panels in a figure in a biology paper. And so I'm going to need to be coming back to this setup of Arial 8 point bold a lot of times. So a way that you can manage that is using your libraries and using your character styles. So the first thing you want to do is create a library. This library is going to hold your character styles and it'll be accessible to you wherever you've logged in on your Adobe account. So if you're using a workstation or something like that, you'll still be able to access them. So I'm going to click here um, and I'm going to click create new library. And I'm going to name this one Smith 2020, which is the na name I'm giving to my publication. I'll click create. And so now I have a library I'm working in. So if I go back to character styles, I'm going to create a new character style. All right, and this is just blank right now. And so what I want is I'm going to call it panel letters. Then I'm going to go under basic character formats. I'm going to choose Arial again. Great, I'm going to choose bold because this is my panel letters and I'm going to choose eight point. All right, and that's all I need. Um, the character color, the default is black, so we'll leave that. Okay, so and I'm gonna add it to my library, Smith 2020. 
Okay. So now my library is opening up and here I see panel letters are in there and if I go down to my character styles I have panel letters there. This is trash, I'm deleting that. Um, so if I come in here and I write some text and I accidentally use my character thing to turn it to the wrong font and no, this is supposed to be a panel letter. I'll go back to my character styles. I'll choose panel letters and it'll reset to be Arial again. So that's really handy. So now that I've made this character style, I want to make sure and change this also to be in the panel letter style. So I just click on it and click panel letters. So now it's in the panel letter style instead of normal character style. Okay, so now I have two things see when I highlight, that are both panel letter style. And the really great thing about using character styles is you can change everything that's going to be in panel letter style, I can change all at once. So um, if, say, I s decide to switch journals and I want to have all of my panel letters be 10 points instead of 8 points. So I'm going to come in here and one of my panel letters is selected. I'm going to go ahead and turn it up to 10 points. Then I'm going to go back to character styles and click this and I'm going to choose redefine character style. And then you see this one grew too. Now both of them are 10 points. If I want to go back down to eight points, which I do, go back, character styles, redefine character style. Both are now eight points. <clears throat> so that's a really handy way to manage all of your text to make sure everything is the same across your different figures and make sure that everything in your figures gets changed all at once. It's super handy. So I'm going to do the same thing with my labels and with my scale bar text. I'm just going to define some character styles. So first I'm going to make a green one and a magenta one. So I'll call this magenta Uh, magenta text all right that's going to be Arial. I'm going to do seven points and regular okay oops and I forgot to make that magenta, so I'll just come in here. And I will come to my colors, which are at the bottom left. Or I can go in attributes or um, swatches, actually. And I'll choose magenta. Great. And I will call this Mito Tracker Red, which is what it is. And I will align that. I'm going to use key object. Because, oops, because, so I remember I'm clicking a second time without holding any keys to choose, make this the key object. That way I can make sure that uh, it stays in the same place. I'm going to align to center. That looks good. So I'm going to do the same thing. First I have to make sure that my character style is updated. Um redefine character style. Okay. Got a new one. Um, green text. Arial. 
Regular. Seven points. And we could choose... I'm just going to choose this green. Okay, great. And I will check that it's in there. It's in there, great. Alright, so I'm going to put in <clears throat> Floydin. And I might need a second line there. And I will go ahead and go under window type paragraph and oops and make that aligned to center. All right, and so now I'm realizing I need these guys, these to be moved down. That's fine. Move it down. Make sure this is turned to green. Great. And then I'll do one that's merged too. That's just black text. So I can click here for new character style. Arial. Regular. Eight or seven. And the character color will be black. Great. Okay. And I'll do merge. And these things, how it's labeled, whether you use grayscale, that is a personal preference thing and you should discuss it with your PI because PIs often have strong opinions about these matters. So this is just how I'm doing it, um, but, but the question of what color it should be is more of a lab style thing. All right, so I'm going to do Align to key object again. Whoops. So I'm pressing shift as I select my two and then or I can do this and select both at the same time. I'm clicking inside of here. I'm aligning to key object. Centering. Okay, and now I want now all three of these are aligned in Y the way I want them to be. And I'm going to raise this one up a little bit. And I'm going to select all three of them. Make this one my key object by clicking on it again. And I'm going to align them on the bottom. So now I have my three labels. Very nice. And I can change, if I end up changing my colors, I can change the colors. All right. Finally, we're going to add our um, scale bar text. I'm going to add a another character style. This is going to be a scale bar. And, oops, I forgot to make anything about that. So we're just going to, instead of putting it in there, I'm going to go under character. I'm going, I, I'm on Arial. I want regular. I'm going to do five point for the scale bar. Great, good. And my color is going to be white and back to my character style. Scale bar has a plus by it because it's been modified and I want to redefine character style because that's how I want it to be. I want it to be this setup. All right, now I'll put that away and I'll put in our five, or this was 20 microns. Remember we wrote that down so that we could be sure we remembered exactly what it was. I put a 20. I need to put a micron and, um, oops. I'm gonna use this white. 
there we go, to select uh, so that I could type in there. And then um, I'm going to go to glyphs and I'm going to find micron. It always takes me a minute to find it. Here we go. I'm going to find micron right here. Great, I have micron, in, uh, I have a mu in there. Now I put my M. Great, 20 microns. Now the bummer about scale bars because they're part of your raster image. Illustrator has no idea where they are. So they, you just have to kind of align it by eyeball. All right, so now, beautiful, I have my first panel all done. Three images, each labeled, scale bar labeled, very nice. So that's it for the text portion, um, part four. In part five, we'll talk about how to export Excel charts and other sorts of charts from graphing programs um, and how to deal with those and modify the text and colors uh, well, modify the text in, in Adobe, and then in the next section, we'll talk about all kinds of colors issues. Okay, see you then.